Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to be looking at a vertical grinding mill. These are often used in the cement industry and also in the power generation industry. And we're going to have a look at all of the components that make up a vertical grinding mill. And then we're going to look at how it works and we'll have a look at some of its design features. In order to fully understand how it works, we're actually going to use an example and the example that I'm going to choose is for coal. So we're going to imagine that this vertical grinding mill is being used to grind coal. So it is a coal pulverizer. Let's have a look at a few of the components and see where the coal enters and things like that. And then I'll explain to you exactly how it works. The coal is actually going to enter through this inlet chute here. It's going to drop down into the main mill body and we can see we've actually got some blue coal here and we're going to go inside the mill. Once we're inside the mill we've actually got some grinding rolls, we've got one, two, three of those. We've got a grinding table which is actually this surface here just where the rollers are touching on. So we can see the grinding table and the grinding rollers. At the top of the grinding mill we have what's called a classifier. I'll go up there now and just work our way up a little bit more and this is our classifier. We go through the classifier and then through the second stage and then the coal, the pulverized coal, will exit out of this discharge outlet here, also called a discharge duct. And if we come down here, you can see we've got an air inlet. Well, this is actually a hot gas inlet, and that comes in the base of the mill. So let's have a look now at how the vertical grinding mill works. As I mentioned previously, we're going to imagine that we're using this vertical grinding mill to grind coal. So what I'm going to do, we're going to use some 3D animation and if we imagine for a moment that the coal is coming down the chute here and then it is going into the grinding mill. So when we go, you can see here is the inlet. So the chute comes down here, connects to the main body of the mill. And if we push play, you can see the coal is dropping down through the chute and then it falls down into the base of the mill which is actually the grinding table area. I'm gonna pause it here for a moment while I position myself a little bit better so we can see what's happening. Ignore the colors for just a moment and I'll explain to you exactly why we've colored the different bits of coal different colors. But let's push play again. Okay, so now the large lumps of coal are coming down and they're being pushed between the grinding table Remember the grinding table, let me just zoom out again, is this area here, it's the grey bit. And the grinding table is rotating, it's dragging some of that coal out towards the side due to centrifugal force, or to be strictly correct, centripetal force. And as the coal comes around, it's going to be pressed between the grinding rollers and the grinding table. And we're going to pulverise the coal and what we're actually doing here is something called size reduction. So we're reducing the size of these large chunks of coal and we're going to make them a lot, lot smaller until they're almost like coal dust. Now once that's occurred, let me just see if we can have a look at some of the coal being squeezed underneath. You can see it coming around, some of it goes under there and we're going to assume now that the blue coal has been crushed down and we have red and yellow coal yellow coal being the smallest and the red coal being medium sized. Once we've reduced the coal in size, it's going to be thrown towards the outer periphery of the grinding table because the grinding table is rotating. So it will come out to the side here and gradually we'll have a layer of pulverized coal that begins to accumulate up to the edge here. This is known as the dam ring or retention ring and once we've got up to this level, we're going to get some overflow and some of that pulverized coal is going to come over the top of the dam ring or the retention ring 
and it's going to enter this space here. Let me just go up a second. We have a side piece here that can be used to push some of the coal back into this area. And this area here, these louvres, allow hot gas to enter into the mill. So we've got hot gas pouring out of these louvres and rising up and through the mill. The effect that that has is to take some of the pulverized coal with it. I'll see if I can back it up, maybe we can actually see that. So here we've got some yellow small bits of coal. Imagine this is coal dust. And you can see that they're now rising up to the top. Let's just go up here. Where are they? They're there. Let's see if I can angle this correctly. We can see the yellow bits, the pulverized coal is flying up to the top there. And it is then going to pass through the classifier. Now it's a little bit tight in this space, I've just got to navigate correctly. But we can see the yellow bits of coal dust are going through this section and then they will travel through the classifier. This piece here, this cone shaped piece is the classifier and it actually rotates. It rotates a lot quicker than what you're seeing now, but it rotates so fast that it will actually impact with some of the oversized coal particles and return them back to the grinding table. The pulverized coal that has been reduced in size to a certain point is allowed to pass through the classifier and then it will go through here and finally it will be swept along by the exhaust gas and out of the discharge duct here and then our pulverized coal will go usually to a furnace or a storage area. Notice that the classifier returns some of the coal back to the grinding table and it does this through the rejection cone and that is this whole section here. You can see it gradually gets smaller and smaller and our cone then returns the red bits of coal. These were the medium sized bits of pulverized coal and they will be sent back to the grinding table where they will be reduced in size again. And that means by the time that they've done this maybe several times, they will end up being yellow sized bits of coal and they will essentially be coal dust. And that means they can pass through the classifier and go to the furnace. Now the rollers themselves, we actually have three grinding rollers in our example. I'll back this up a bit so we can see them better. And we can see that the grinding table rotates and the rollers are stationary, but they will also rotate. This ensures that we get even wear across the grinding rollers themselves. Coal itself is very abrasive, so the grinding table needs to be hard coated in order that it can resist the effects of abrasion due to grinding the coal. We can retract the rollers easily using rocker arms. That's the rocker arm here. You can see we have some sort of hinge arrangement. That means we can rotate the grinding roller and then it will be outside and we can perform maintenance. The other way to retract the grinding roller is simply to pull it axially outwards, although that really depends upon the design of the grinding mill. In order to grind the coal effectively and in a controlled manner, We'll actually use hydraulic power packs in order to maintain the same amount of pressure between the grinding table and the grinding rollers. We'll use a large motor normally with a gearbox and that will be installed somewhere down here, roughly where the base of the ladder is. And the motor will connect via a gearbox onto the lower part of the grinding mill. And as the motor rotates, the gearbox will also rotate and a secondary shaft or another arrangement will rotate the entire grinding table. We'll also need a motor on the top of the grinding mill and this allows us to rotate the classifier. You can see the motor would connect roughly here. That is the top of the classifier shaft. Now, although I chose coal as a working example for this 3D model, this type of grinding mill is often used also in the cement industry for crushing various rocks, but thermal power stations, coal-fired power stations will often 
have one of these vertical grinding mills if they're quite large in size or if they have a large megawatt capacity. There are other grinding mill types available, such as the ball tube mill, hammer mill, ball and race mill, etc. And we'll probably do a video about some of those in the future. It's important to realize here that in our example, a coal pulverizer actually has three main functions. It should dry, grind and classify. Now we're drying the coal because we grind it or we reduce it in size. And then we use hot gas to dry it as it travels from the bottom to the top of the grinding mill. The hot gas used depends upon the setup. It may be heated ambient air, but it also may be exhaust gas from, for example, a furnace. Just keep in mind that the type of gas you're using dictates the amount of oxygen that's in the gas. And in some conditions, you may not want to have much oxygen in the gas at all because oxygen allows for combustion and combustion allows for explosion. So there are different system configurations concerning the hot gas and where it comes from. The second purpose of a coal pulverizer is to grind. We're grinding the coal to increase its cross-sectional area, which allows it to dry quicker and also allow it to ignite and combust more efficiently. The third and final purpose of a coal pulverizer is to classify. We've already reduced it in size and now we want to ensure that we're delivering the correct sized pulverized coal to the furnace. And in order to do this, we'll use a classifier. So just remember, coal pulverizers, three purposes, dry, grind, and classify. There are three main types of coal pulverizer that you're likely to see. Those are impact, crush, and attrition types. An impact type coal pulverizer can be thought of as a type of pulverizer that functions similar to when you take a hammer and hit an object. That is essentially how an impact coal pulverizer works. A crush type coal pulverizer can be thought of one that uses the principle similar to when you take a rolling pin and you roll it across a table, crushing salt granules as you go. So that is a crush type coal pulverizer. The third type of coal pulverizer that you're likely to see is the attrition type coal pulverizer. This is essentially where you grind the coal against itself. Or if you don't know much about coal, then think of two sugar cubes rubbing against themselves. Now the attrition type coal pulverizer is quite unique because rather than wearing down the components of a machine, such as the grinding rollers, or for example, a grinding table, we're using the material itself to grind against itself and essentially wear themselves down. And we call this attrition. So three different types of coal pulverizer. Impact, think of a hammer hitting something on a table. Crushing, think of a rolling pin rolling across some salt granules on a table. And attrition, where you can think of two sugar cubes rubbing against each other. It's also possible to classify coal pulverizers based upon their operational speed. Coal pulverizers are going to be low, medium or high speed. Usually, low speed pulverizers are attrition type pulverizers. Medium speed pulverizers are used for crushing. And high speed pulverizers are used for impact type pulverizers. If you liked this engineering video tutorial, then please feel free to subscribe or like it or share this video on social media. It really does help us out and we're very grateful. And if you would like to see more engineering video tutorials, then check out some of the links in the video description area. If you click on those links, you'll be taken to savree.com and you'll see some of our online video courses. We have over 30 hours of engineering video tutorials and we cover everything from heat exchangers to pumps to valves and diesel engines, to name just a few courses. Thanks very much for your time.